All right, today we're talking about performing rotations. Okay, rotation and transformation, which a figure is turned about a fixed point called the center of rotation. All right, rays drawn from the center of rotation to a point in its image form the angle of rotation. All right, like down here in this diagram here. From the point that you are rotating it on, whether it's the origin or some other random point, okay, the rays drawn from that point to your fig to your um, original figure and your image, okay, they make the angle of rotation. All right. Um, and again, a rotation is an, an, an isometry. The figures are congruent when we rotate them. All right. If Q is not the center of rotation, P, then QP equals Q prime P, all right, QP, these rays or these segments are congruent, okay, and the measure of angle QP, Q prime, right here, the angle of rotation equals X degrees, all right, or if it, Q is the center of rotation, P, then the image of Q is Q. All right, meaning if point Q is the point of rotation, Q and Q prime are the same points because you'll be rotating on that fixed point there and your angle will be between like this segment here, all right, and this segment of the, your image, all right? It would be coming off right here, all right? Similar to this, if point Q is my center of rotation, you know, then my figure would be, you know, somewhere like this, all right? Now this is now my angle of rotation, okay? So if a point of rotation is the, one of the points of the figure, all right, then one of the points then is for sure um, the image point as well, all right, Q, Q prime would be the same point then in that instance, all right, and then if it's a neutral point or a, just a random point not on one of the two figures, all right, then you will for sure have all points that are new, all right, or your image points, okay. All right, um, a rotation, we can do a clockwise or counterclockwise. And again, for those of you that don't know, clockwise, we're going this way, starting out going to the right and coming back and finish up to the top. Counterclockwise, we're going this direction, okay? Um, in this chapter, we're talking about rotations that are all counterclockwise, though. But you can go both directions. We're simply going to use counterclockwise, though, okay? All right, rotation is about the origin, all right? So the origin of your coordinate axes here, all right? Uh, you have any rotation you can have, and they can be larger than 180 degrees, all right? Because if you think about it, if I go from point A, if I go all the way around and I come back to point A, I've gone 360 degrees, okay? So you can go 130, 220, 310, okay? You can go anything, you know, within a circle. Uh, a rotation of 360 degrees returns a figure to its original coordinates, like I said before. All right. Um, there are some specific coordinate rules for 90 degree rotations, 180 or 270 degree rotations. All right, and those are right here. So if you, for a 90 degree rotation, if you have point A, B, all right, and it doesn't matter where A is, A and B, or A, B is, all right, it can be here, it can be over here, doesn't matter. What the rule is this, you have a point A, B. You have the opposite of B, all right? Not just negative B, because if B starts out originally to be negative, it will now over here be positive, all right? Because the negative times the negative B would make it positive. All right, so that's the opposite of B, and then A, whatever A is, all right, for your 90 degree rotation. For 180 degree rotation, for any point A, B, the opposite of A, the opposite of B, all right? And for a 270 degree rotation, for any point A, B, B and then the opposite of A. Okay, and we'll I'll show you an example of one of those here, actually right here, right now. All right, graph quadrilateral RSTU with vertices three one five one five negative three and two negative one. Then rotate the quadrilateral two hundred seventy degrees about the origin. Okay, so we're going to graph this quadrilateral. R is at three one. There's point R. All right, point S is at five one. Point T is at 5, negative 3, and U is at 2, negative 1. Okay, so I have my figure. All right, there's
there's my quadrilateral. Now, I want to rotate it 270 degrees. All right, my 270 degree rotation, the transformation is this. A, B to uh, B negative A, or opposite of A, excuse me. All right, so doing that, in doing that, my rotation, 270 degree rotation, all right, point R, I'm going to rotate point R, and this is, you're rotating it about the origin, so here's our rotational point here, the origin, all right, so I'm turning it around that origin there, 270 degrees, all right, so the rule is this, any point A, B, it's going to be B, and then the opposite of A, so B here is 1, so it's 1, R prime, applying this, all right, if I apply this, it's going to be 1, negative 3. S prime would be 1, negative 5. T prime, okay, would be negative 3, negative 5. And U prime would be negative 1, negative 2. All right, now graph those points. R prime is 1, negative 3. There's R prime. S prime is 1, negative 5. T prime is negative 3, negative 5. And U prime is negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so again, I got my figure. And there's my quadrilateral. Okay, rotate it about the origin 270 degrees. Okay, point R is going from there to there, 270 degrees. Okay. Again, I've mentioned that a rotation is an isometry, and that again means that the figures are congruent. Okay, so knowing they're congruent, Okay, if the figures are congruent, okay, we got these two figures here. All right, it's rotated about point B, P, 100 degrees. What is the value of Y? We're trying to find out what Y is, okay? Well, just looking at this, if these are congruent then, all right, this side corresponds with which side? Because that obviously deals with Y. All right, it corresponds with 5Y equals this side, 3X plus 1. Well, if we look at that equation, can we solve that equation? And the answer is no, we can't solve that yet, right? So we first need to know what x is. All right, so now I look at this diagram. Okay, where's x? Well, there x was there, but that corresponds with 5y, so I can't do anything. Here's x as well, 2x. 2x corresponds with 6. All right, so solve this. x equals 3. Okay, great. So 5y equals 3 times 3 plus 1. So 5y equals 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. All right, divide by 5. y equals 2. All right, y equals 2. So again, a rotation is an isometry, so the figures are congruent. If the figures are congruent, that means the segments are congruent. It means the angles are congruent, so on and so forth. Okay? All right. I want you to try this problem, and we will talk about it in class. All right? We'll find the value of R in the rotation of the triangle. So you're finding R here. All right? All right? So please try that problem, and we will talk about that later. Thanks a lot.